So good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again. We are going to review the all for nothing documentary that me and Dan have watched this afternoon. And uh, obviously, misery loves company. So who else could I get on to review this? But Dan Potts, how you doing, Dan? Yeah, I'm safe, man. I, I listen. Thanks for coming on. It's been a while, man, and I'm glad that you're smashing it. And I hope you've had a good summer break, mate. Um, I know that you're in the mud, and it's looking like you're in the mud, bro. I mean, look at you. You've got golden tan. Things are looking up for you. Good channel, Gan. What's happening here? Uh, nah, good to see you smashing it, man. And um, thanks for having me back on, man. It's been an interesting day watching this Amazon doc, man. I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, it's been mad. Uh, for anyone who hasn't subscribed to Dan's channel, you can hit the blue hyperlink in the title of the video, and that'll take you straight there. You're on, what, 3.3K at the minute? Subs? Uh, yeah, man, on the road to 4K at the moment, man. Yeah, Come cheers on, for that, bro. That um, it's also pinned to the live chat as well, so um, just click on it. Go and subscribe to Dan. He's got a good channel. He's got fans from all different clubs on this season. Every club in the Premier League, haven't you? Is it, is it every club? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. No, I appreciate you plugging that, man. That's a massive help to me. And uh, now the season's up and running. We've got um, a Premier League influencer from every club. And we're going to be doing shows, um, well, three shows a week on, and every single club will be involved. So, um, yeah, man, something a little bit different. I do enough Arsenal content, man. I can't run another Arsenal channel, mate. <laughs> There's too many out there, bro. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Uh, big up to this guy as well. Lee's last season and he's out of business. Uh, judging by the 6 0 <laughs> win and my fan cam hitting 62,000 views, mate, I very much doubt it. Mm. <laughs> but thanks for Do you know watching. what? I see that the other day, bro. I see that the other day, man. I see like Lee, most positive I've ever heard you. And I thought, oh, how many views is that going to get? That's one of your most viewed videos, man. I was like, geez. Yeah, this, is, this is what people don't understand, Dan. Yeah, the two FA Cup games, the semi and the final, I think are in the top five most viewed videos on my channel. We won them both. Yeah, I think. I think out of the top 15 videos, I've only got four videos that involve losses. Yeah, the rest are all wins or uh, watch-alongs of other teams. Like, it's mad, isn't it? 20 odd thousand people watched me watch Bayern Munich against B PSG a few years ago. Like, why? Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I, love the narrative. Oh, I got told um, after the, the last game against Everton, people in my chat were just lighting up my chat. Oh, you're finished this summer. Yeah, you're finished. You've got nothing to talk about, bro. I had, I think, 10 days off last month and still did 850,000 views. Like, it's mad, bro. It is You're smashing it, is. it, man. You're smashing um, it. This is the thing people always say well, that we profit off loss and that we only ever watch people when Arsenal lose. It's mad. It's it's rubbish. Me and judges are the same. People always watch it when we like more more views and we win games. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So no, it's true, man. It's true. At the end of the day, people are interested in seeing what you're saying, especially when it's a, a six 0 victory against Sevilla. <laughs> yeah, of course, saying? man. Of course. But they also equally want to see me have a meltdown when when we're getting panned by by a team as well so you don't have meltdowns though mate you just laugh it off <laughs> well yeah that's true you know what's funny right i've been quite much of the channel yet right and um he sent me a football shirt it should be coming the end of this week or next week right he hasn't told it was for a birthday present right but he's um he sent it he hasn't told me what team it is i am hoping it's via real yeah I, it's not an arsenal <laughs> shirt i know that much yeah, I am hoping it is a Villarreal oh, show. <laughs> <laughs> it's his birthday tomorrow as well. Big up to Jolien, man. Um, Big up. Yeah, but listen, there's only one place to start. We're getting to talking about some transfers and how you think the window's gone a little bit later. But hmm. um, we see the clips come out before the documentary dropped at midnight last night, I think it was. But we've seen the clips coming out. We've seen the um, the picture where he had all the wolves on the background. Um, <laughs> we all thought that was a bit weird. Um, he's then had the the club photographer taking a team talk before the North London derby. <laughs> uh, and we were like, okay, uh, we won the game. Maybe he should be the manager. And, um, and then we've seen him bellowing out, you'll never walk alone at London Colney. <laughs> like, but then when you go in to watch the program, he's drawing hearts and brains on, on whiteboards. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, what, what, what have you made of it so far, Dan? Because they're, they're, there's been a lot of hype around this. There's been a lot of ifs and buts and what's going to happen. Now it's come out. Firstly, has it lived up to the, what you thought it would be? And and secondly, um, who do you think is come out, coming out of it looking good? And who do you think is coming out looking pretty bad? Yeah, there is that to it, man. I'll tell you what, my eyebrows have been hurting today because most of it has been... <laughs> or <laughs> throughout the first three episodes, bro, I can't lie. But having said that, there are some positives and some of the players have actually come out quite, quite well. And I'm really, really um, happy with that because it's players that I really like. Uh, Ramsdale, I think, has come out really well so far from what I've seen in the first three. Um, Saka has come out great. You can see that everyone really loves and respects him and he's got a, a real good attitude. 
Um, and the other player that I think has come out well so far is Kieran Tierney, and he's been injured most of it at the moment, and he's still come out brilliantly. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is I'm not seeing this leadership from Granite Chaka yet. I'm not seeing this Erdegaard captaincy stuff yet. Um, I've not heard a peep from every either of those. So in the coming, I think there's nine altogether. So in the next six episodes, I imagine we'll see a bit more from some of the other names. But those three have certainly come out well. Um, I've been confused in parts, mate. I can't lie. I've been very confused in parts because I haven't seen much tactical knowledge from Mikel Arteta yet. I've just seen motivational speeches. Now, I understand you need some of that and you need some man management as well. It's not all just all about being tactically great. But all I keep hearing from the last two, three years now is that this guy is a tactical genius. But you wouldn't know that from looking at the first three episodes, that's for sure. So I imagine in the next six, we'll start to see some more of his tactics because I haven't seen any of it yet. It's not been evident at all. The never walk alone thing was embarrassing, mate. I, I, I thought that was extremely embarrassing. And I don't know any neutral football fan that has thought that worked well. Well, I mean, I say worked well, obviously it didn't work because we just got smashed 4-0, but you get what I mean. None of them understood it. I heard people on TalkSport calling it bonkers. But then I heard some Arsenal fans saying it was great and I understood why he was trying to do and what he was trying to achieve. I didn't understand what he was trying to achieve there at all. Likewise, I didn't understand how you have to draw a heart and a brain with a face on it for people to understand that they need to show some passion in the game. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially in North um, London Derby. It was the North London Derby, wasn't it? Oh, I, I didn't like, get that on. at all. So there's been some confusing things, man. But you asked me at the start what I thought it was going to be like. It's very much what I thought it was going to be like. And I I do think throughout the season, if you look back now, Lee, at some of the moments from last season, you can tell the Amazon cameras were on them. You really can. Yeah. And I think that's come across in the first three episodes that people are trying to do this. I'll set that up here and then have a conversation here. We'll bring a camera in. You, you can, yeah. your, your mind starts yeah. to work. Do you get what I mean? To one of the club staff. I can't remember the fellow's name. But Edu was kind of looking up like, am I on camera? Am I still on camera type of thing? And it's like, Wasn't it mad? It was a bit, yeah. Mm. And like so Josh Kroenke, he's come in like tries, oh, you can tell what Josh Kroenke's done. Get me involved like early doors, and then it will look like I'm here right from the start. We won't see him now, probably for six episodes, and he'll come in at the end <laughs> as if he's been there all along. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's mad. I don't know. It's just all a bit of a play at the moment. So we'll see, man. We'll see. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, the players that you mentioned, Granite Xhaka, I've I've not seen nothing of him apart from when he said that um, you're going to be a good player in the future or something to Smith Rowe. Yeah, and he was like, no, I want to be a good player now. <laughs> I loved that. I fucking yeah. loved that. That was the exactly. best quote of the whole thing for me. That was, the, mm. but you're going to be the player of the future. Why is it always about the future with these geezers? It's never about now, is it? And Smith Rowe's mm. like, oh, I want to do it now. I thought that was a quality response. I yeah. thought it was nice when um, him and Saka were sat there saying, imagine scoring in the North London derby. Loved that, man. Like, and yeah. then they both went and scored in the North London derby. And like when Saka loved was it. saying, when he went into, to, I think it was Waitrose or somewhere, and he had his hood up and like the mask and all the staff were waiting for him. I mean, it must <laughs> be mad being that young. Like, being such a superstar for a, a massive football club like you and he said like he goes i can't do normal things anymore like and he's mm. 20 21 years old and it's like you just can't just pop to the shop yeah because now yeah. you've got a load of people running around trying to get photos off you it's like it's kind of mad really isn't it and i think like i liked seeing that side of the players i loved i loved that around that was family man they were sitting there going mad they were for it class like, weren't they i loved that. that 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 was really not nice to see because i've been really lucky to have a great family behind me and i you just know that how important that is and i think that's really good that they've they've shown that and like the way that he's got into it he's been for me come out the best so far for me around yeah. ramsdale i think he's been class he's everything that i want in in my team and i'm so glad that we got him do you know the one player that does worry me actually mate and he's gone now nuno Tavage. There's some he weird. Didn't even like, look like what? he wanted to be there, did he? That was worrying, mate. His <laughs> whole attitude, like, like just sits there, like. <laughs> I don't, do you remember when the guy's talking to him one on one, saying, "What's the matter with you? One minute you're up here, one minute that," and he's like, "Don't know." Yeah, I don't, <laughs> know, like, mate. don't care, mate. Really, like it's just like that's worrying, mate. <laughs> he's so worried. It's mad because he was saying like it, it was hard when he first left Portugal and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's like a lot of his family are back in Portugal, mate. Now he's gone to France. It's even further away. <laughs> He's now further away. It's mad. I don't know about him. Like, I'm not sure what they saw with this kid. Like, listen, I don't think he's that bad going forward, but the kid can't defend. So why did we buy him as a left back? It's mad, isn't it? So yeah, it but is, he didn't come across is. that well, I didn't think. No, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I agree about Ramsdale, mate. When he was fuming about not getting the clean sheet, 
he, he was ready to start swinging and then Gabriel walks in and he goes, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, it's class, wasn't it? I thought that was wicked. And then he, the, was it the Everton game? He comes out and he goes, fucking embarrassing. Like straight away, yeah, first one to come in there. Down. Throws his water bottle. <laughs> All you've got to do is defend. <laughs> I loved it. I always, I, I, it's, he's the one who's come across best for me. Mm, yeah, I agree. I think he's been quality. And um, like some, some of the, some of the stuff that like the, like you, you, we got told that Aubameyang was a big problem in the dressing room. Yeah, so far we've not seen any of that. I know, obviously, this is before it gets to yeah, January. It'll be so interesting because this is the next part. So let's see where yeah. it shows us. But yeah, I, I, I don't, exactly you know what, though, Lee? I hope he don't come across as the villain, man. I, ho I hope he don't come across as the villain because he ain't a villain. Yeah, he's fallen out of the manager. That happens in clubs. Just don't. I don't want them to start making this out to be more than it was. Which well, what we know, when we still don't know, because it's so um, it's not transparent enough. This football club for me, but and and some things need to be kept to understand. But at the same time, no one actually knows what the hell has gone on, and I don't want them to make it out to be as if this geezer has done something drastically wrong. Because I really doubt that he has. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. Uh, well, we would have found geography because apparently Portugal is closer to uh, to France than it is England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, he's right as well, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he's actually through, right. Through she can go to Calais in like <laughs> two hours. <laughs> yeah, just cut through Fra uh, Spain into France, mate. Like, happy days. Yeah, but um, <laughs> big up to everyone watching, man. There's 700 in here. Make sure you subscribe to Dan's channel. It's in the title of the video. Just click it. takes you straight there. Failing that, it's in Cheers, the pinned nice. comment on the live. Uh, big up to everyone watching, man. Um, I, I want to um, say about Arteta, right, because... I've, I've gone through a lot of the comments on the posts that have been put out by Arsenal and by Amazon. And, mate, look, like we were just talking backstage, yeah, and I, I feel like reading... I, I didn't read every single comment because there's thousands, but just going through them, the general consensus from Arsenal fans on these posts is that he's a genius. Like, oh, the team talks are insane. I mean, look at what he's doing. Like, he's almost like a father figure to these young kids. I put out my Instagram, take take a new drinking game, take a shot every time the narrator mentions it's a young team and a young manager. Like in the first 11 minutes of episode one, I think he said it six times. And it's like, we know he's a young manager. We know it's a young squad. I, but... I don't rate him either. I'm sorry. I've got, now you've mentioned it. I don't like the narrator at all. Mm. I don't I don't think that's suited. There's something wrong there. He's really poor, isn't he? Do you, do you not think the narrator I think, is just... I think the pauses in, in speech are way too long. Yeah. yeah, like there's like yeah. 10 second gaps before he then says the next thing. And mm. it's like, just seems, I don't know, like he, he actually, I'm not going to, I'm not going to coat him off because he did an interview the other day and he said all Arsenal fans are wankers. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. No way. He's an Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I like him now. He said, I'm an Arsenal fan. He goes, yeah, but we're all wankers, aren't we? <laughs> I like that because I've said that before that Arsenal fans are deluded and most deluded in their fan base. So I fair play to him. Maybe he's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think like you know, we we were told that this manager is like some tactical genius, and I've seen a few people in the chat saying, "Yeah, but you, they're not going to show um, the tactics and stuff like that because obviously we've got to play a lot of these teams again this season." Well, I, I was saying to you backstage, and anyone who's watched it will remember this when Jose Mourinho was doing the Tottenham one. Yeah, he was talking about Pogba because they were playing Man United next. And he said, Pogba's going to get the ball here and he's going to diagonal ball it across to Rashford. Don't let him get the ball there. Yeah, and he was going through all of this. And then the very next game is Man United. Pogba gets the ball there straight to Rashford, bang, goal. And it's like, why aren't we seeing that? Maybe we will. But in the first three episodes, all I've seen is just a motivational speaker. I haven't seen this big tactical genius that, that everyone keeps telling me he is. Like, you've got all the players that are coming out. Oh, he's one of the greatest managers I've ever worked with. I mean, Granit Xhaka, turn it in, mate. Uh, he was sitting there the other day. Oh, he's the, the best manager I've ever had. Well, you've had some poor managers then, didn't you, mate? Right, uh, he was also it. saying that. Do you remember when uh, Judges sat next to him and the, uh, the Emirates at that time? And he said, oh, what do you think of the manager then? And this was Unai Emery at the time. And he said, best coach I've ever worked with. They all say <laughs> it, mate. It's mad. Like, they all have to say it because they know that they can't say, actually, he's shit. Or, oh, you know, yeah, he's he's learning and on the job. He ain't going to say any of that. He's going to say, he's class. Otherwise, he'll be dropped next week. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, we're 12 games in, mate. And you're right. He hasn't done anything. All he does on that tactical board is move the numbers back down. Have you seen? Yeah. He just moves yeah, all not, of the he's numbers. Not saying this player's coming down here. So nah. what you need to do is go <laughs> like there. He's just moving them down and saying, well, Lukaku is playing here, so we just need to push up a bit more. I mean, come on, we could do that. Yeah, yeah. and he was like, play yeah. him offside, play him offside. Yeah, like, come on, seriously, man. It's, it's, 
Like, it's mad. It's actually insane. The comments I've seen about this guy on them posts is like, it's literally like he, he's God, mate. Right? And I've, I've, I've never seen a manager get more protection than this guy based off of mm. doing that fuck all in football, right, as, as a manager. Mm. It, it makes no sense to me. It gen genuinely doesn't because, yes, he's won an FA Cup, but the irony of that is he won it with Unai Emery's team. And then we get told as fans, me and you especially, um, that Rome weren't built in a day. Well, how comes he won the FA Cup in a day then with Unai Emery's team? He's then got <laughs> he rid of 95% of them and ain't won nothing since. <laughs> <laughs> and they always try to, like, fans always seem to try to compare us to Liverpool. I hate that yeah. because it didn't take Klopp five years to get us back into the Champions League, did it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it ain't taken... And also, Liverpool's model isn't hire a novice. They hired Klopp, who'd already won stuff in Germany. So why... You can't compare it, mate. It's absolute mad. But, and then he got, yeah. he got into the Champions League in his first full season. Second season, full season, he got to the final and lost because of mm. Carrius. Third full season, yeah. he won it. So, so he qualified for the Champions League twice and got to the final twice. And then he won the league <laughs> after that. It's and then he mad. won the league the following season. It's mad. It's mad. Like, it's, and then people... Cups. So how is that anything similar to what we're doing then? Like, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> and, and, when, and when you look at the team Klopp inherited, I mean, it was a shambles. Let's be real. Like, oh, it was, and, yeah. And, and the way people are banging on about Unai Emery, it's like he left a mess. Like, I've seen some people that are very well educated, right, that have been to football for a long, long time, longer than I've, I've been supporting Arsenal. And they're sitting there saying, yeah, I can see progress. We're definitely going forward. He was left a mess. And I'm thinking... Bro, he's done 370 mil and still not finished above Unai Emery's best position in the league in his only season. How many more years have we got of this before it's acceptable to say, actually, you're not good enough? Well, I don't right. think we can have anything more than this one, mate. I, I can't. If we don't get into the Champions League and win Saint this year, then I don't see how any fans can get behind this anymore, mate. I really don't. So, you know, I know we'll talk about it in a bit, but that I don't think we've got any more excuses to that first eleven to not win Saint this year and not at least get into the qualify for the Champions League. So, if he can't do that, he's got to go, hasn't he? It's just mad. It's just mad. Well, especially when um, Edu's coming out, and it's funny actually because last summer Edu sat there and said, "I just want to see the team play." <laughs> he never gave a target. Josh never gave a target. Arteta never gave a target. This this season, you've got four of the players, Ramsdale, Xhaka, um, Odegaard. Odegaard and Smith Rowe all coming out saying top four and uh, Europa League is our aim this season. Yeah, so and then you've got Edu coming out saying, well, actually, it's about time we start winning trophies. Yeah, so my question to Edu is, and to all these other people in the high, hierarchy at Arsenal, if we don't win a trophy, are you all leaving? Because you would have failed. So they all the get sacked. Yeah, failed. exactly. Right. So if the target's trophies, if you don't win trophies, what's going to happen? Like mm. you failed. So oh, I don't know. This is the problem. And this is why Lee didn't want to give a target last season. This is why. Because if mm. he gives a target, the fans will get on his case if they don't hit that target. And we didn't hit the target, which, let's be honest, was top four. They all said, that no, it weren't. It, we were happy with top six. That's why he got a new contract. That's just mediocrity at the, at the fucking highest order, mate. Get top six and you get given a new contract. This is Arsenal, isn't it? Not West Ham. It's mad. It's crazy. Hey, it's, it's actually insane because I, like you, you see you see it all the time. You're in group chats. You're on Twitter. You're active on YouTube. Like you'll see a lot of people saying, "Yeah, but you know we've we've got one of the best keepers in the league. We've got one of the best right backs. We've got one of the best centre back pairings. We've got one of the best left backs. Now we've got versatility. Versatility. That's a buzzword this summer. Versatility." Yeah, it just means the player can't hold a position down, mate. <laughs> so, I mean, that's all it means. Yeah, and it's like, then we've got Thomas Party, one of the best DMs. Well, he ain't even DM, he's a box to box. Then it's, we've got Martin Odegaard, he creates so many chances. Now we've got Jesus, we've got Saka, best youngster in the league. Got the best manager. Okay, where are we finishing this season then? Oh, well, I'll take fifth. So, if we've got the best of everything, why are you accepting fifth? It makes no sense, bro. <laughs> Do you know what, as well, right? This comment is class, this one, right? This, this sums up exactly why. I did not trust any of this process. This comment here, right? Because I saw this and you would have in the thing, um, in the uh, documentary. Edu and, Ra and Steve Round pretty much saying, yeah, he's learning, isn't he? He's learning, yeah. he's getting better, he's learning. This is an Arsenal football club, mate. This isn't Sunday League stuff. It looks a little bit more <laughs> relaxed after a few wins. <laughs> oh, my God. I was I was fuming, mate, at the TV. I was thinking, are you kidding me? He's, we, they're happy, lol. We're starting to beat Norwich and Burnley now. It's starting to look good. Like, absolutely yeah. embarrassing, mate, these people. And that is, shot, that is exactly why I didn't want this process, mate. Yeah. But, but but that's the thing, Dan, right? It, it wasn't rocket science that we're not backing it and, and wanting it because 
the guy had no track record. He'd managed one game for Man City when Pep's mum passed away and they lost to Leon at home, which was their first home loss in the Champions League for about seven years or something stupid. <laughs> and he was mm. in charge. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, there was no, like, like you said about Klopp, Klopp was a qualified manager that had won trophies and got to Champions League finals with Dortmund. You know, and then they've gone and got him at Liverpool. How anyone can compare us to Liverpool is mad. Like, I genuinely don't get it. And when you when you see um, behind the scenes in this this documentary and you see some of the players, like you said, Nuno Tavares don't even want to be there. Didn't even look like he'd give a shit about football. Yeah. You've got um, Smith Rowe saying, well, I want to be good now. Yeah, I ain't waiting for the future. I want to be the best now. Now you've got Bukayo Saka, um, who I think... I th- do, you know, do you know what? Last season, in, in, it showed when he scored the goal against Tottenham. I think it was 20 games without a goal until that game. Mm. Yeah. And I was getting on his case. I was going, yo, this boy, everyone's hyping him up to be like Ronaldinho. He needs to start scoring goals. But since mm. that North London derby, he just went whoosh and he's, he's gone up. So big up to him because it must be a lot of pressure for both of them when they're wearing number seven and number 10 on their back. Mm. Yeah. And then they've got a manager that just baffles the life out of them. <laughs> with drawing <laughs> brains and hearts and putting wolves up on them and like getting them like, like, mate. But then you've got you've got other players that like Granit Xhaka. We get told, oh, he's such a great leader. Well, where's that then? Because I ain't seen Where's that. he been? All I've seen is him get sent off twice in that in them episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've seen him get sent off more yeah, than he's given motivational speeches in the dressing room. <laughs> 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 it's, it's so true, guy. man. It's mad. And then you'd look at, oh, Aubameyang's a problem. Aubameyang's a problem. Well, he don't look like a problem. Then you've got Odegaard, who's apparently such a good captain. Well, we've seen nothing from him. Then no. you look at Ben White. Ben White, that, that made me laugh, man, when he sat there and he went, yeah, these kids were saying, I'm shit, 50 million. <laughs> that was so funny, wasn't it? Oh, I must mate, admit, I laugh, even laugh adults that. that were saying it, it was kids. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> And they all laughed. All the players just started cracking up laughing. Like laughing. Callum like, Chambers yeah, and mate. Holding. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but he's another one. Rob Holding. Yeah, like, we haven't seen much of him. But he seems like he's just happy to be there. Like, it doesn't, yeah. like, it doesn't he look like... He probably is, though, Lee, isn't he? He probably is. Like, that's another one. How's he still there? Like, he must be thinking, Christ, like, I've done well here to get, like... Don't get me wrong. There's nothing against that. Because men- mentality-wise, he don't actually look so bad for me. But talent-wise, it just ain't there. And I think, remember when Carl Jenkinson like was at Arsenal and it was just like, how? It's a bit like that, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, how's he been here for, what, six years now? Oh, Something protect- like that. We've protected his value, Dan. That's why he's still here. Oh, don't. <laughs> another contract we gave to someone. Like, that was, that was Arteta, wasn't it? Give him another contract. Yeah. So, protected you know, his that's value. his player now. Oh, yeah, mate, but that's the thing. Like, I think now Leno's gone. I think every player that was signed under Sven Mislint's hat has gone. Every single one of them eight players has gone. Genduzi, um He was another fraud. Uh, Yang, he was another fraud, wasn't he? Oh, 100 percent Diamond. He was a fraud. Like Dusty, Lich right? Steiner. Lich Steiner. <laughs> uh, Socrates. <laughs> Mikatarian. Torreira. No, no Torreira <laughs> wasn't one of his. Oh, no, Torreira wasn't one of his, I don't think. Genduzi was. Yeah, that's uh, the only one who was decent. All the others. And, and obviously a Yeah. Yeah. It's it's mad though, isn't it? It's like, you know, some of the crap that gets peddled out by our fans and by this club. Like, oh, we're protecting his value. Well, what does that even mean? Because Rob Holding was worth 10 million quid, regardless of how many years he had left. Like, he could have I was having I, what I don't get, bro, is like the 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 immediate defense of anything this regime does, not just Arteta, from mm. some of the Arsenal fans. I put into a group the other day, I think Leno going for three million is a disgrace. It's absolutely yeah. shocking. We are shocking at selling players. Ah, well, he's 30 now and, you know, he had a year on his... I don't care. Three million pounds for a German international goalkeeper. Fulham must be howling. Absolutely howling. And it only goes up, by the way, to eight million if Fulham stay up, apparently, which they ain't going to do. So we've got three million (laughs) for Bernd Leno and we paid 26 million for him. only. And and we spent seven million out on Tina Turner from America. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's mad, isn't it? Like, no, that guy time. couldn't catch a cold. Did you see the shot that he oh, let in? Oh, he's awful. The that, he Straight doesn't at him. Good, does he? Jesus. Wait, if, if Ramsdale gets injured, and this is one thing I was surprised about, when um when he was sat down with the um with the guy before he was doing his medical, yeah, and he was writing down, have you had any injuries? Have you broken any bones? Have, when was the last yeah. time you were injured? I was shocked Ramsdale's never, never been injured. Yeah, because like, he's come to they, Arsenal. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Normally <laughs> they do a little wrist injury or break a finger or a thumb yeah, or yeah. twist an ankle or get a groin strain or something. <laughs> like, and he had none of that until he came to Arsenal. Oh. He, he had a couple of games out injured, didn't he? But 
I was shocked. Bro, you've done me, you done shocked. me, man. I can't. I, you've done me now. Some professional. Tina Turner. That just that, that got Tina me. Tina Turner. Man. That got me, mate. Tina Turner. Hey, I, said, I said it last season, like when everyone was hyping about Ben White. I said the first bad game he has is Ben Shite for the rest of his career at Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Tina Turner. I've seen enough of one game to know he couldn't catch a cold. Bro, we still got Runnison here. Like, oh, how? don't, man. don't, bro. And like the other ones have all gone on loan to like League Three clubs, haven't they? <laughs> League mm. Two, obviously. But yeah, like it's mad, isn't it? And I look at it and I think with Turner, I've only seen him for a couple. And when I've seen a couple of pre season goalkeepers, they look shocking. Like, do you remember that Aconquo last season in pre season where he, he messed up and he, he looked yep. shocking? We got, we got obviously Tina Turner you're making me do it now. We got Turner <laughs> in goal. And, uh, that that goal against Nuremberg was shocking, but against Everton, he looked shaky as hell, mate. Like he looked so shaky, and that's a Premier League like team. Do you know what I mean? And and they crap by the way. They're my tip to go down this season. So mm. I look at it and I think like I we really can't let Ramsdale get injured because this guy does not look ready like at all. And like it's fair enough saying that Leno needs to go and get a first team football and he's had enough and he's done his time for four years, but. Actually, like, how about just act like a big club and say, look, we want two world-class keepers here or two class keepers here anyway and, like, keep them there. Do you know what I mean? And, like, they fight for the shirt. Like, that's exactly what we should have done back with um, Emmy Martinez and Leno. Like, why yeah. did we get rid of Martinez? Just let them fight for the shirt. And, and now that, we're doing it again. That's, like, and that's why, I'd Dan, I don't, um, I, I don't go with what the majority of the fans say because when Emmy Martinez left... Everyone was hyping up Leno to be the greatest goalkeeper in the league and he was going to be a great keeper for us. Finally, we've got a top-class goalkeeper. Look at the double save against Tottenham. Look at this, look at that. And then all of a sudden, he dips in form. Ramsdale comes in. Now it's our fucking get rid of him. And it's like, but you lot are all saying keep him over Emmy Martinez, who's better than all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's actually mad how it's gone, isn't it? We could have had Emmy Martinez in goal. Yeah, and we could have had Ramsdale coming in and fighting with him. Or we could have just kept Leno. Yeah, and it, it's actually mad. Like some of the some of the stuff this football club has done is just baffling, man. It really is. It's like you get rid of Emmy Martinez, you get rid of Genduzi. Some people will say, "Oh, but he's got an attitude." I couldn't care less. He walks in that midfield. Yeah, he is a quality footballer, Genduzi. Yeah, he walks in over Granite Xhaka. Yeah, yeah. he's got a bit of heart and a bit of fight on him. And he Do you not get think as well, Lee? Like, I think he's gone to Marseille. Not only has he got into the French international side, but how many times have you heard of his bad attitude from the Marseille manager? I ain't heard once that he's been causing well, it's problems. funny because um, I think Charles, Charles Watts put an article out there. My mate uh, put an article out there. <laughs> he likes you. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hope he goes the same way as Wheatley, mate. You know, he's working at Nottingham Forest now. <laughs> um, but he put an article out there saying that um, he's a problem in, in training is demanding everyone give him the ball, and if they don't, it's a problem. The very next game Marseille played, they made him captain. <laughs> yeah, that totally put no his way. eye. In. Yeah, they made him captain the very next game, only for the one game. But they made him captain as if to say, yeah. But even up. for them, to, yeah, exactly. But all, even for them to pick him, that that means that all the dressing room must at least respect him, even if they don't agree or disagree with what he's saying. I really like the kid, and thought he showed a lot of drive and passion, and I thought he's one of our better performers in that midfield. And I know that people were saying he looks scatty at times and rash, but he's young. He was twenty, like he's going to. He needed somebody next to him to put his arm around his shoulder, and look, he looks either side of him, and he's got Chakra and El Nenny. What's he, what's yeah, he supposed to do? Do you know what I mean? Then he's got a manager that's telling him he needs to apologise for sticking up for his goalkeeper. Like, do you know what? It's mad, isn't it? It is actually mad. I didn't like then, it, man. It left a bad then, taste in my mouth. And then when Tierney and Ramsdale are having afters with someone, I can't remember which one. I think it was Tierney having a go at somebody for kicking Ramsdale. Yeah, or, or the other way around. It was Ramsdale on Tierney. Yeah, so, and he was leaning like, oh, look at the passion from Ramsdale. Well, Gendouzi was doing the same, mate. Yeah, then yeah. we've got rid of Aubameyang. And whether you thought Aubameyang was missing sitters or not, Aubameyang, by the way, I hope he goes to Chelsea because that is going to shut a lot of people up when he starts bagging again. Yeah, because mm. he will. Yeah, he will start scoring again if he goes to Chelsea. And it kind of makes sense that he could go to Chelsea because he was linked to them heavily before he went Barca. And now they've got Lewandowski in. So maybe they don't need Aubameyang so much. Yeah, because Lewandowski is a better footballer. Tuchel, Tuchel would have him, mate. He scored, there was a stat today on Sky Sports News from that Darmesh chef that was looking into the goals that he scored when he was at Dortmund under Tuchel. He played 96 times and scored 79 goals under Thomas oh. Tuchel. Wow. Imagine. I mean, listen, you know, he's not the same at Bamiang, all this stuff, but I tell you what, he'd, he'd bang in goals, mate, for Chelsea. 100% he would. So oh, all day long, yeah, all day long. Good, good signing for Chelsea. They don't care either. Chelsea are doing madness. Like everyone's ruled them out, mate. They're jumping on their grave and everything. It's hilarious. Chelsea are going to be. Uh, Chelsea will be fine. Trust me. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And if they end up with um, Frankie De Jong, Aubameyang, Kukurea, yeah, Koulibaly, Sterling, yeah, I think they've probably won the transfer window. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Everyone's sitting there going, "Oh, they're finished. They're finished." Well, they were finished when Roman left, apparently. Yeah, they've just signed one of the best centre backs on the planet, and somebody who's going to bag them 15, 20 goals this season in Sterling. And then probably if they get Bamiang, he's going to get him fifteen goals a season as well. So it's mad. Like people just like they like to they like to wish it away. It's like when they wish away Man City. Like oh, it's, he's got rid of Jesus and Sterling now. It ain't going to go well for him. Well, he's replaced like Fernandinho with Phillips. He's going to get another left back in. Like it ain't going to be Kukurea, but he's going to get another left back in that's going to be as good, if not better, than Zinchenko. He's replaced. Uh, Jesus with Haaland, who's probably, as well along with Mbappe, one of the best players in current world football at the moment. And they've got Alvarez as well, who's banged apparently in three season and he's been scoring. But uh, why are they all now in, in the mud? I don't get this with this fan base. I think it's just okay. the hope, isn't it? It's the hope That's they want. It it's more hope yeah, they so, yeah. It happens. And then, and then all you'll get is, oh, yeah, well, the referees. I mean, I see, I see a tweet the other day somebody sent me. Yeah, that um, I think it's Anthony Taylor's in charge of the game against Palace tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got Anthony. Oh, God. Well, why don't you lot all pick the fucking ref then? <laughs> yeah, because every ref that gets picked, you moan about it. So why don't you pick the ref? Yeah, why don't we just do a poll? Yeah, and we pick the ref. Yeah, and then yeah, you get, oh, but they're all as bad as each other. And then VAR. And then, oh, but we had injuries. The excuses are going to come this season, Dan. Yeah, it's mad. Uh, let me quickly rifle through these super chats. Big up to yeah, 1100 watching. Make sure you subscribe to Dan's channel. The link is in the um, the title of the video. It's the blue hyperlink. Just go and subscribe right now. And um, big up to Matt. He says, I've uh, got five US dollars on Airport Albert. Um, we'll provide tactical depth in the next decade episode. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, also completely embarrassed Pepe in the team talk. Absolutely no player awareness. What did you think of that? Big up Matt for the donation, man. What did you think of that? Because I'm not saying he singled Pepe out, but it was like Pepe was about five rows back. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. And it was like... Mm, and Pepe sort of had his head down the whole time, didn't even look at him. Yeah, he did. It was a bit frustrating, really, to see because this is a player that I actually have, have tried to I do my best to stick up for in the fan, this fan base, and no one wants to hear it. Um, and um, I think the mismanagement of him, and to be fair, Nuno Tavares, I know we've just mentioned how how poor he was, but the way he managed him that seat last season, I thought was shocking, if I'm honest. Um, so I've not been too impressed by that off the pitch. So let's see what it comes across like in this Amazon documentary, because I'll be making note of those sort of things to try and understand myself as to why he's doing it, because he's done it. We know he's done it. And the way he treated Nuno Tavares, the way he's been dump dumping Pepe out, like I, I don't think Pepe started more than what three games in a row <laughs> something like that oh, so I like how he's the most mad. games he's ever played in a row is eight <sighs> eight in three years it's mad isn't it 72 million quid signing but i think they're saying yeah. iffy with that deal anyway like Rouse yeah, yeah is no longer one, here man. is he and, and he was involved in that deal and apparently allegedly i have to say allegedly uh, allegedly there was a few little brown envelopes being switched weren't there so um yeah. i don't know maybe there's something where we have to pay them stupid bonuses if he plays a certain amount of games for us or saying i don't know it's weird isn't it yeah it's mad it's mad and i think the the signing everybody went mad over because of the price tag but actually if pepe would have been signed for 25 million he'd actually everyone would be going oh he looks all right you know for 25 million it's mm. mad because 16 goals season before last top scorer he's actually um i don't know if you noticed that actually lee if you Counted up all the goals that the current Arsenal squad has scored. Pepe's top with 27 goals. So yeah. he's our top scorer at the moment in the all-time of Arsenal in the current squad. So you look at that and think, he's got some talent about him. I hope he goes, to be honest, because I don't think... I know, people say to me, would you keep him? I would keep him, but the manager won't play him. So there's no point in keeping him. So you might as well let him go and do his career. He'll have a good career somewhere else. Even if he stays in the Premier League, he goes to Newcastle, he'll go and bang in goals. If he goes over to France, he was already proven he can score goals. I, 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 don't, I just think he gets... He's not my favourite player. He just gets a hell of a lot of criticism when Lacazette yeah. can stink the house out for nine weeks in a row and get no no abuse. Granny this Jack guy... gets sent off every other week. Granny Chaka, another, another one. Yeah. yeah, it's mad, isn't it? I don't get these players. They just they love have their favourites, man. And, they and do, mate. The, it's bizarre. The fact is... Yeah, the fact is, Granite Jack is just, oh, yes, boss, no boss, free bags, full boss, says all the right things, pretty pretty little face on him. Yeah, and um, like, oh, he, he's the he's the glue in midfield. No, he is fucking useless. Yeah, he's one of the worst midfielders I've seen at Arsenal. Yeah, and that ain't mm. even a joke. Like, he is genuinely shocking. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd stand take, him. I'd take John Henson like over him all day long. Like, even <laughs> Ray Parler, who's, what, 50-odd years old now, I'd take him in midfield over him. Like, it's actually mad, isn't it? 
But uh, we're going to come to Xhaka in a minute because somebody's put in the uh, in the chat. We'll come to that in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, big up to uh, Fat Baby Ambience. What a quality name that is. Um, <laughs> big up Lee Legend. Did you uh, think it was embarrassing the way Arsenal players were swinging their shirts over their heads in the dressing room just for beating Spurs? Um, I didn't think that was embarrassing, to be honest. You know, because like, listen, I don't see them as our rivals. Yeah, we, they don't win fuck all, but we want to win the game. And to the players, it, it means something. Yeah, yeah and they that's the what, game. I mean. what I did find embarrassing was all having a fucking team photo. Yeah, I thought that was like when they're all standing, the whole staff, everyone, oh, yes, it's like, mate, you've just beaten Spurs. We beat them every year at the Emirates. Like, I thought that was I must a bit admit, I, I, I thought that was a bit odd, but I understood the the joy because I, I love the North London yeah. derby. Absolutely hate Tottenham. I'm with you. They're not our rival. They're our rivals by through geography. <laughs> They're not yeah, our rivals yeah. through what they win. Do you know what I mean? So it's always good to beat them. But um uh yeah fair play. Do you know what Lee I want to bring this up quickly because Nathan uh Minas, by the way in the chat is just what I was saying quality. Did you notice how they skipped the Palace and Brighton games where we drew and I did I knew that I thought that was quality <laughs> like it just went from there it went straight to Leicester and I was like where was the two draws and like every the whole um Stadium erupting when Lacazette got a last minute 2 2. Like, where was that? Where was that shown? Yeah. Why weren't it that was, shown? <laughs> it was funny because they only showed the Ronaldo penalty as well, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah. Didn't show yeah. And it was like, come on, Man United are a rival. Yeah, like that is a rivalry. Yeah, yeah. They, it was us and them. Do you know what I mean? It's like and they just showed Ronaldo's penalty and him suing in the corner. <laughs> What's that all about? Uh, big up to Arsenal fan 13. He said, I can't wait to see our Arteta play pretend manager. I'm getting the popcorn ready, bro. Um, <laughs> It's mad. Yeah, I'm not gonna we're not gonna ruin the whole thing for you, but yeah, good luck. Um big up to uh big up to Mr. B as well. Bought the trio back when Turner overdrive, surely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but listen, before we get into talking about um about the transfer window so far, um this comment, I'm gonna bring the tweet up. I'm gonna actually share the screen with a tweet because <laughs> we um Is this for we, real? See last, we see last season. Uh, let me find it. There it is. We see last season that um, the Leeds game, he was the only player for Arsenal that did actually get a booking, right? But then it kind of got brushed under the carpet. Um, but now there is apparently investigations into suspic uh, suspicious betting versus Leeds that game uh, last season and looking into alleged criminal conspiracy involved, involving Albanian mafia, apparently, uh, and former professional uh, foot, um, the former professional footballer who's already been convicted for match fixing, uh, which is kind of mad because um, if Granite Xhaka is involved, if it is a big get, if, he's, he's finished. Long, he is done, mate. If that happens, if it if Christ. it isn't nothing to do with him, then um, then I don't know why he's linked. <laughs> imagine if this comes. Imagine if this comes in and then party uh, stuff comes out. We'll have no oh. midfield. <laughs> <laughs> we're going with Sam Milikonga and El Nenny in midfield. Get Patino <laughs> back off loan. <laughs> oh, dude, we shouldn't laugh. Oh, my God. Oh, it's embarrassing, this. Have you seen the clip, Lee? Because I have against Leeds. Did you see the booking yeah. he got? Yeah. It's a disgrace. It was a bit it's a weird. Disgrace. It? Yeah, it was, it was a disgrace, mate. It's definite. It's 100% But the thing is, though, I mean, if, if, this, if this is true, right, and, and like everyone who has seen the clip, I mean, it, it was a blatant piss take. Yeah, it was blatant. Yeah. So if that is true, then you'd say, well, he would have to be in on it. Like if, the, if the, these people that are being investigated, well, they ain't just going to hope he's doing it. <laughs> just you know what I mean? Yeah, he's obviously 100. said, yeah, I'll do it if that is the case. Like, it's, it's mad, isn't it? It's actually insane, mate. The, the amount of shit that goes on in football that we don't even know about. Yeah. yeah but, but I mean, that was blatantly obvious that he was trying to get booked. Yeah, and that yeah, was what, 100%. 86 minute or something? 87 Yeah, it's 86 minute yellow card. Then he stands there and he takes 40 minutes to take a, take a free kick, pretty much. I'm like, <laughs> come on, like, this is obvious. straight to the side. Yeah, and he just waved everyone off. <laughs> yeah. And then he passed it sideways anyway. <laughs> it's so obvious, wasn't it? It's was so bad. <laughs> Do you know what? I went to that game and I remember sitting there, and I was drunk at the time, and I remember sitting there thinking, what is he doing? Do you know what I mean? And I'd had a few beers, like, but I mean, that was blatant, bro. It was blatant. So, yeah, mm. it could be trouble for him, mate. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I listen, <laughs> if he, if he's done that, then he's going to get banned for a long, long, long time, um, which will probably do us a favour, um, if we're being <laughs> completely honest. <laughs> Won't have to see him getting sent off every week. We might actually keep 11 men on the pitch. Um, but <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to our transfer window. 
uh, before we wrap this up. Um, we yeah. signed Tina Turner um, for seven million. <clears throat> We've signed Austin Trusty the process, um, oh. who's now gone straight out on loan and will never <clears throat> kick a ball for Arsenal. That was all. That that was a typical Arsenal signing. That let's yeah. buy a player called Trusty because we're trusting the process. Yeah. Um, and we're going to open up more fans in America because we've signed two American players. Yeah. And and people just say, oh, that's short sighted. That's that's not a good way to look at it. Well, the guy's never going to kick a ball for us. They yeah, had a goalkeeper. Yeah. Okay, cool. He might actually get a game. But let's not pretend that we've just come back off a tour in America um, without looking to gain new fans. Yeah, because mm. we went there for a reason. Yeah, we signed these players for a reason. Yeah, America is up and coming and barely been touched by football. Yeah, it's more the American mm. sports out there. So, them two have signed. We then signed Marquinhos that no one's ever heard of. Um, but now he's prime Ronaldinho because he signed for <laughs> Arsenal. Uh, we signed Fabio Vieira, Calstrom, um, in a protective boot. But it was only precautionary, apparently. But he, he's actually broke a bone in his foot. Um, and now he's the second coming of Bernardo Silva, even though nobody watches Portuguese football. And then we've signed Jesus and we've signed Zinchenko. Do you think that is a good window? What would you rate that out of 10 as it stands? And then what else do you think we need in as well as then outs as well? Yeah, people thought I was harsh when I gave my rating. Um, before we signed Zinchenko, I was on Tobes' channel and he was talking about Arsenal and, and Spurs' window. And I gave it a five and everyone said I was a disgrace for giving it a five because we sold J we signed Jesus. And I thought well, we had signed Jesus, but I don't know who any other players are because I didn't know Turner. I don't know Mark Quinos. When we signed Fabio Vieira, everyone was saying, was, had messaged me going, have you heard who we link with? Have you heard who we link with? No. Fabio Vieira. I said, who's that then? And I was like, oh, he's that highly rated Portuguese. I can't believe you don't know who he is. And I said, well, he's not on, been on anyone's wish list the whole summer. So I don't know how anyone's excited by this because I don't know what he's like. He's five foot seven. He's in a boot and he looks lightweight to me. But listen, he could be brilliant. I'm not going to judge before he wears a shirt like I don't any mm. of the other players, like I did with Ramsdale and Tommy Asu. But when I look at it, I don't get excited by any of those signings other than Gabriel Jesus. So I gave it a five. I'm happy to give it a six now we've got Zinchenko because I actually really do like this player. And I think that he's going to show us a little bit of versatility, some leadership and some mentality, and more importantly, some winning mentality. So I like that signing. But, mate, we're still well short. Like, people are getting excited, but we're still well short, in my opinion. We're basically an injury away from Thomas Party. Uh, sorry, we're a Thomas Party injury away from being a disaster at the, in midfield. We've got no other holding midfielder that's good enough, in my opinion. We, if, if we lose... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jesus. We've got Eddie up front for the season. That ain't good. I'm sorry, that ain't. People are starting to believe it. Uh, listen, I think what I've seen in pre-season, I like what I see in terms of his intensity. I like the fact that he's turned on the ball, looks better, he looks stronger. But nothing nothing to suggest that he's going to be scoring us 20 goals a season. Um, people say we don't need a right-back. We've got Ben White there. We do need a right-back, mate, because Tommy Asu, I like, but he's never fucking fit. Cedric has clearly showed for the last three years he ain't good enough for the Premier League, let alone for Arsenal. And then you've got Norton Cuffey that people are saying is the next Lee Dixon. I've not seen him kick a ball yet. So <laughs> I don't really me, understand. Dad, but obviously, a, a journalist has put a clip out of him or saying. It's mad, mate. Listen, he might be quality. I'm not saying he's not going to be. But that you don't want him coming into your team, do you? So for me, there's a right back needed still. I still think we need a left number eight like a Tielemans. I still think we need a defensive midfielder to cover the party. I still think we need a centre forward because if Jesus gets injured, we do have Eddie and Ketia. I, I, I'm sorry, mate. I, I'm not. I don't want to start slagging Eddie off because he's he's the nice lad and he's he's trying his best. But the geezer, I don't think, is going to get us for 15, 20 goals a season that we would need a, a striker to get us. So if we're injured, we're screwed with that. We definitely need lack aerial threat in the box because like Jesus and Eddie are about five foot six each, aren't they? So we've got nobody in the in the box there. And I think personally, on the right hand side, um, with Saka. If Mark Winos ain't ready, then if we don't keep Pepe, we're going to be short there as well. So I do think we're four or five away, and I can't see it. Yeah, I can't see us getting anywhere near that, uh, mate, if I'm honest, because we can't even get rid of Pablo Marie and Torreira and Maitland Niles and all. But Bellerin's Bellerin. still here. Like, uh, Bellerin is actually still here, and he gave him the armband the other week. I was sh it's just a madness, mate. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're still going to do business, and I like what I've seen, but I can only rate it at six at the moment, no higher, because. Some people are getting on, going on about you know how how great these these this window has been, and I don't think it's been a, a fantastic window. I'm sorry, it might be negative. People might think that's not the right thing to say, but I really like Jesus and Zinchenko, but the other players are unheard of, 
and we need a lot more at the moment, mate. And we've still got outgoings that are just... It's a madness that we can't get rid of some of these players. And when we do get rid of them, they have to either be uh, paid off to go yeah. or we have to we, or we have to say, oh, we'll just accept two million for Leno because, you know, we just want him gone type thing. But with Bellerin, I mean, this geezer is one of the most overrated, not just right backs, Arsenal players, I think. The minute he said that we needed to win too much, uh, Sanchez wanted to win too much, I'd have, I'd have booted him out of the club. Yeah. But we kept him for another four years. And then wondered why he couldn't run anymore because he'd had like no knees left. I, I just don't rate the kid. I, I don't think he can cross himself in church. The geezer's all right with his pace, but that's now gone. <laughs> it's a madness, mate. It's un honestly, bro. Wait, it's I'll go madness. to London and pick him up and drive him to Betis around the corner, mate. Like literally, I will <laughs> drive him there. Yeah. I will pay Betis to play him all season. <laughs> bro, I don't get this, mate. Like even Carl Jenkinson had a bit of cross than Bellerin. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he did. Like, yeah, it's, he did. it's poor, mate. It's poor, so and yeah, I, 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 I don't rate it that highly, man. But you know, still more. Yeah, to see, I, I agree. I, I feel like the two players we've signed of quality are Jesus and Zinchenko. Yeah, but if Tierney's fit, is Zinchenko starting? Because I think Tierney's better than him. If if Thomas Party and Tierney are fit, where's he starting? Because I don't see him starting. But then maybe he's trying to get rid of Tierney because he's injured all the time. But then I see a stat the other day saying that Tommy Asu was injured and missed more games last season than Tierney. So yeah, it's like everyone raves on about Tommy Asu. Yeah, mm. oh, he's great, he's great. Oh, I'd get rid of Tierney, he's injured, he's injured all the time. Well, Tommy Asu's calves are made of cardboard, mate. Like, mm. He's been out for six months, Dan, with a calf strain. Yeah, like, I don't get this. That, that, that's weird that. to me, man. That's weird to me. Because, you know, when this betting scandal come about with the Chaka thing we just spoke about, I thought when they said it was an Arsenal player, I thought it was him, Tommy Asu, because they were saying, oh, he's got a calf strain and it's been 12 weeks so far. And I thought, ain't a calf strain then, is it? Because... That, that he needs, he must have something like in his leg that's wrong because you can't have that. I've never heard of that. So I like Tommy Asso. I know you're not a massive fan. I quite like him. I think he's a good player. But when I look at his injury record, it's worrying. But then you're right. People will say, Kieran Tierney, might as well sell him. At party, might as well sell him. If we sold them two, that's two of our best players that we're selling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. Two man. potential man. captains as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and I don't care what's going on with Thomas Party. We need him in our midfield because we look awful without him in there. Like, we, it changes the whole dynamic of how we play, in my opinion. Like, you know, I know you're not an Erdegaard fan, and I've questioned what he's going to do next season in terms of his goals and assist ratios. He got four assists and seven goals. That's shocking. Jordan Henderson got five assists. Do you know what I mean? So I look at that and think he should do more. But Erdegaard actually does play well when Thomas Part is in the side. When he's not there, we look dreadful. He looks awful, I think, Erdegaard, mm. when he's not there. Because he doesn't allow him to do what he's you know, technically good at. Because whether you love him or hate him, he's technically a good footballer. It's just the fact that his goals and assists for me are just poor. Really yeah. poor. Yeah, people you know? hype on about um, how many created chances he's done and all that last season. I, I did a show last night and I brought up big created chances. Because a created chance is fuck all. What's, I want to see big created chances. Bro, we got players like Norgard, yeah, at Brentford creating the same amount. Yeah, we got Kulazewski who started playing Premier League football in February, getting the same amount. Six. Yeah. Six big created chances. You got Christian Eriksen who came into Brentford in January and got five. Like yeah. Benton Core at Tottenham got six. It's like, you know, this is apparently our creative spark. He doesn't score enough goals. Yeah, we need. But he's got no excuses now, Lee, because we got a Jesus. Everyone was saying, "Oh, because Lacazette's no good." Well, he's got no excuses this season because Jesus is good enough. So mm. let's see what he does this season, man. There's no more excuses. There's no more excuses anymore. Like I can't deal with this. They've all these people have always got an answer for why it's not going well at the moment. It's all right at the moment. It's Lacazette. Okay, well he's gone now. Who are you going to blame? Or Bamiang? Well, he's gone now. Who are you going to blame? Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's mad, isn't it? It's really well, weird. Why do you, why do you think that is the case though? Because like it's almost like. Everybody, or not everybody, but let's say 95% of Arsenal fans that we see online, you just can't say a bad word against the club, otherwise they're all on you, right? Mm. But they believe everything's great. Every single player, apart from Pepe, yeah, because Pepe is just a scapegoat now. Um, mm. So maybe it's him. Maybe we need to get rid of him and then we can be great. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was a Bamiyang, it was Lacquer, it was Gendouzi, it was this player, it was that player. Well, maybe we just need to get rid of Pepe and it's sweet and the club will start mm. winning again. I don't know. But why, why do you think that... It, he gets so much protection from our fans. Yeah, I've asked this question loads and no one can tell me. I've asked the people that love him because um, I'm, you know, I get on with everyone, as you know, Lee. And they'll say to me, I just really like what he's doing at the club. But then that's fine if you do. I've, and listen, I'm not saying that you shouldn't like what Arteta's doing. You can support your club how you like him. But just don't come for me when I decide that I'm not happy at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So when I look at it, 
The reason I think they're protecting him is because the the hope, there's so mm. much hope that it's going to work. They cannot, they can, the, the pill is too bitter to swallow to say, actually, it's not going right. So they don't want to swallow it. So they just hope and hope and hope and hope. And they'll keep hoping, even if we're going 16th, 17th, 18th in the table, there's still hope this guy's good enough because the hope is just too much for them. And potentially, you know, it will kill them. The hope will kill them. And that's what they always say with Arsenal. We are one of the most gullible fan bases in the world, in my opinion. We've been told to go to the Emirates to win stuff. 20 years later, we can't even get in the Champions League and we're still nodding our heads going, come on, trust the process. That's what our fan base is, mate. This is the problem. We've moved to a stadium to try to compete with Barcelona, and we can't beat Brighton. <laughs> so that's the reality of it, mate, that we are in a situation where the fans just want to say everything's rosy because it's easier to just ignore it all, isn't it? And go, nah, la, 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 fingers in my ears, it's all good, Arsenal are going to win the stuff. And unfortunately, mate, and it's not all the fan base because I know that there's a lot of us that aren't happy with it. But when yeah. you look at that, you start to wonder, is Stan Kroenke really going to care? Because at the moment, we're all nodding our heads going, fifth progress. So he's not going to give a damn, is he? So I do look at it and get frustrated. And this is why, because when I lose football games, Lee, I rant and I rave and I'm, I hurt big time. And what I hate is when it's not reciprocated by other fans. I hate it. I think, why aren't you hurting like I am? Why aren't you pissed off that we are fifth in the league when we throw away foot fourth, being four points ahead with three games left? Why are you just accepting that? As, oh, it just happens in football. If that, if that was it hurts. Miami, they'd want him out. If that was Wenger after all them years, they'd want him out. When when I see um, the the um, um, uh, you'll never walk alone with the big speakers. If that's Unai Emery, they'd say he's tapped, he's mad. Get rid of him. Yeah, and it's like 100%. for me, I feel like the way the the way this man has been marketed by the football club. Yeah, they've literally got all the journalists in their pocket. Yeah, because otherwise you ain't getting no information out of Arsenal unless you work with us and put out what we want the narrative to be. They've then um, they've then I swear they pay some of these accounts online. Yeah, and give yeah. them perks and stuff like that. Like, oh, we give you a discount code for the store to put out to your 300,000 followers and you'll get the 10% discount that they're saving. Like stuff, little things like that. Give them access um, like in press conferences and stuff like that. Yeah, I swear down, Dan, yeah. Right. Barcelona got done for this. I, I thought it was Barca and I said it last night and I went and checked and it was Barca. They got done for paying um, like social media influencers and and companies and big like traction accounts like with massive following to put out propaganda for the club they got done for that when they were being investigated i think it was last year or the year before yeah i swear arsenal were doing the same because all you ever see is every journalist saying how great Mikel Arteta is very very rarely but i see one today that i sent it to you where he said he was like a, um, a substitute teacher or something i saw that yeah <laughs> but if i you saw that yeah. the comments on the tweet he's just getting battered yeah and it's like but he, he's won nothing. He's, he's, he's took us it's from mad. eighth to eighth to fifth. And mm. people are saying that that is progress. That is yeah. great. That is fantastic. I have never, ever, ever seen eighth, eighth, fifth, and this football club's fan base yeah, being so ultra positive about everything. When we, mm. when we were in the Wenger in, Wenger out era, yeah, well, top four, top four, we finished fifth. Yeah, even then, when we finished fifth and finished sixth, even then, I've never seen Wenger get so protected as compared mm. to Arteta. Yeah, mm. and Wenger has done a hell of a lot more for the football club than Mikel Arteta ever will. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah, mm. we've had some of the greatest footballers I've ever seen play for this Agreed. football club. Yeah, Agreed. he's won us trophies. He's gone invincible, and so and, I, and you know I wanted him gone. I can't stand Wenger. Yes, yeah, same. same. I wanted him gone as well. I think he's a massive part of why we're fucked now. Yeah, oh, so we're a massive. He's a massive part of why people are celebrating fifth. Do you know what I mean? It's progress. That, that's you know because it's only one off a of fourth, which is a trophy. So you know, and, and the thing is, mate, and it's a young the thing squad. Is, and it's a young <laughs> squad, which you write. I think it was you, didn't you say that in 08, 09, we got to a Champions League semi final with a younger squad? Yes, yeah, so younger. That, that squad we had that season was younger than the squad we had last season. And no one yeah, wants and to mention that. League semi, but no one to mention that because that don't fit no. the narrative, does it? It don't fit because the agenda, does it? It's it. mad, isn't it? That is such a great point. In 08-09, which was a good team, by the and way. And we was in a title race. Was... And we were in a title race. Was that the year Eduardo broke his leg? Eduardo was done that the leg, yeah. 
Yeah, there yep. you go, right? That was the only season, I think, in my opinion, we've ever got close since moving to the Emirates of winning a title. That was the only season for me because the Leicester one, we finished, what, 11 points off of them? And the mm. other one was against in 13-14. We were right. top of the league right. in January and we ended up about 11 points off Liverpool and City in the end. So I look at it and I just think this is a madness to think that we've only actually gone once close to winning the league in the 18, well, has it been 15, 16 years that we've been here now? It's mad. But when you think of it, Lee, right, we wanted, I wanted to do Niamhry and Wenger out because they couldn't win us a title, not because they couldn't get us in the top four. I didn't actually care about that because if you don't win the league, I don't really care, really, if you, if you finish wherever. Well, I want to get into the Champions League for the pure fact that that's our next level to try and get progression because we ain't going to win the title, mate. We're nowhere near it. So I want to ask a question. If we wanted Wenger and Emery gone because they couldn't win us the title, is this guy going to win us the title? If your answer is I don't think so, why do we want him here then? That's exactly. my honest approach. I just don't get this mentality. It is literally, I look at it and I think, as much as there is some good I can see he's done, right? There is some. I like some of the stuff he's done. I don't like a lot of what I've seen on the pitch. Off the pitch, what he says, what he tries to what he tries to do, the fact that he wants Arsenal to win. I like all that. That's great. But you need to actually deliver it. You can't, because otherwise I could say it. I'm going to take over Arsenal. I'm going to clear it all out. I'm going to get rid of the players like Mustafi, Kalasinac, Urzi, all the ones that weren't good enough. And I'm going to replace mm. him. Everyone go, oh, hey, this lad sounds good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not actually hard to look to talk about what you're going to do. You've got to deliver it on the pitch because it's a results business. And the way that we're looking at it, we need to be going for titles if we're going to be spending four hundred million pounds. And we're nowhere near it, in my opinion. So this season, if we're not going to qualify for the Champions League and we don't win that Europa League and at least go into the deep stages of both domestic cups, which apparently now to most fans are just a waste of time and just get in the way of the season. When I, when we were growing up, absolutely loving them. And also Which this I, manager's won one, the by only, the way. Yeah, the only reason he's still here yeah, and getting after love is because he won one. <laughs> And since he's won one, mate, we've lost to Southampton and we rolled over against. Not in a forest that we rolled over against. And everyone's gone, don't matter. Top four. It's all about top four. Well, what happens if we don't get top four? Well, we don't, that's what we've got to go for is top four. Yeah, end of the season, we ain't got top four. So what was the point of going out of the competition exactly. against Forest in the first round? When Chelsea Man. had Lampard and um, we beat them in the cup final, right, but they got top four. Our fans going, ha, yeah, but we got a trophy. Ha, ha. But if it was the other way round... They would have gone, I don't care, we're in the Champions League. And if we're yeah, in the top four. Yeah. <laughs> they've always got an excuse, mate. It uh, is it's just a nightmare. Jarring, isn't it? man. But you know what? Ultimately, they're all going to fall flat on their face because the manager ain't good enough. Yeah, we've mm. spent a lot of money, mate. A lot of we've spent more than anyone in Europe since Wenger left. Anyone. Mm. Yeah, in terms of net. Yeah, we've spent more than anyone. Like people, people to say, oh, but Chelsea did 100 on Lukaku. Yeah, but they made 105 million quid back in the summer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they were actually yeah. in profit in the summer. And it, it's mad. Like we've done more than Man City. They spent they, they sold Fer, Ferran Torres for 55 mil. They they've sold us to, um Jesus, they've sold Sterling for 49 mil. Like they they've it's mad. And then they've only gone out and, and signed Haaland for 57 mil. Like yeah. it, for me, it makes it makes no sense the excuses that keep coming out for this guy. But ultimately, this season he's going to get sacked. I think because there's no more excuses, bro. There's here. no more excuses. And you look at the four teams that finished above us. Look at their managers. They're all elite. Tuchel, Conte, Pep, Klopp. That's the reason they finished above us. Because you're telling me this Tottenham side, player for player, is leaps ahead of Arsenal. No, Conte's dragged them somehow. By the way, into the top four, and they're my tip for third. And everyone laughs yeah. at me and calls me toxic. I think they're going to walk. I think they'll be the best of the rest, Tottenham. They will. See, they'll get third. The thing is, right, is these people say toxic, negative, you're a Spurs fan. Then it's because they haven't got an argument against your factual information, mate. Yeah, it's yeah. all that goes, oh, you're toxic. But well, why don't you put an argument up to show me why I'm wrong? Yeah, but they can't. So it's you're a Spurs fan. I've, I've just seen that Asper Laquette has signed a new contract with Chelsea. And that's a great signing because he's quality. Uh, they, he, he's still in it, yeah. He, he is class, man. Uh, Marcus Alonso is going to Barcelona. Um, Fabrizio is saying that Kukurea is signing for there. Chelsea. Yeah, um, Who is? Kukurea apparently is signing for Chelsea. Oh, Kukurea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, London, so. they'll be up there, man. They're, they're, they'll be up there, man. Um, Chelsea. Like, they're, they're not going to. I think they'll get. My, my top four prediction is Chelsea and Spurs to be in with City and Liverpool. I don't think it will change. Same. All I think will change is that Chelsea and Spurs will switch places. That's all Absolutely I think will happen. I agree, man. I said this yesterday. Um, I totally agree. When you, look, when you look at the managers, like Conte came out today and said he wants to win the league in the Champions League. Like, and yeah, that might just be lip service, but at least he's fucking saying it. Yeah, That's I'm the ambition I'm, you want to hear, isn't it? Exactly. Our manager's going, well, I just want to see the team play together. We take it game by game. <laughs> like, fuck off, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, at least Edu came out this time around and said, no, it's about winning trophies now. Yeah, so that is the standard that I'm holding that club to all season. 
Yeah, you said trophies. I want trophies. Yeah, I've waited long enough for, for well, us mate, to win a title. Maybe Conte will start drawing a brain and a heart on the wall, mate, and then Tottenham might have a chance of winning the Champions League, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> mate, no wonder they look baffled when they're out on the pitch. Like, do you know what I mean? It, it's, well, maybe it's he'll play. Bad. Um, what was it you said? He'll play Chaz and Dave every day for him. Like, uh, to get yeah, them up for the game. away. Yeah, I bet they don't show the Tottenham away. The team talk before the Tottenham away game. I bet they, I bet the <laughs> photographer didn't take that team talk, did he? I bet I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's actually mad. But listen, we're going to wrap this up, people. Big up 1,200 people still here. Make sure uh, you stick a like on the video. Uh, big up to everyone who has nearly 400. Come on, smash that up to 500 quick. Uh, make sure you follow Dan's channel as well. It's in the title. It's also the pinned comment in the live chat. Uh, make sure you um, go and subscribe to Dan. What you got coming up the rest of the day, man? The rest of the evening? You're streaming? You're on other channels? What you uh, yeah, me and Lee Judges are doing a stream at nine on Lee Judges TV, uh, doing the Palace preview, mate. I've got me, Lee and Mark and a Palace fan on with us to discuss that. Um, and then my new channel starts next week. I've got two shows on a Tuesday, one on a Wednesday. Um, so I'm going to have kind of three shows. One of them will be like a Race for Europe show with Arsenal United. Chelsea Spurs, West Ham, those kind of clubs. And then obviously have a best of the rest show and a relegation fight show. So we're going to have loads and loads of influencers on over this coming week, next week, man. So, um, yeah, it's all good, man. And thanks for uh, plugging the channel and thanks everyone in the chat for subscribing. Much appreciate. Uh, come on, big up. I, I forgot there was a game tomorrow. Very quickly before we wrap up. A couple <laughs> minutes on that. Um, how do you see that going? Because we've been we've been really good in preseason. The Sevilla mm. game, um, to be fair, Sevilla's preseason is further back than ours because their season mm. starts after us and they have lost their best two center backs um but we absolutely battered them and that was i yeah. i actually enjoyed watching that that was the first game under this manager i've actually enjoyed 90 minutes of and yeah um, it's yeah, mad, isn't mad it, it? <laughs> yeah Chelsea was a good game i enjoyed that as well but mm. um we then go and lose to brentford and you said it to me yeah everyone's going oh there it's the backups yeah but they're the only backups we've got <laughs> it's like, yeah yeah where, where do you see like obviously the the real stuff starts tomorrow Palace, mm. we got Wallet 3-0 there last season. Where where, yeah. where do you see us tomorrow? Do you, do you think it's going to be um, a victory or do you think it's just going to be... Because, listen, I ain't seen any of Palace's fixtures. I don't know any of their results in pre-season. One thing I do know about them is he's building a team full of big lads that are going to yeah. get insulated in front of us and they're going to try and tower over us, get stuck in. Do you see us winning the first game? Yeah, I do. Um, this is a completely different Arsenal side that goes to the... Um, Palace side of last season. We've got um, Zinchenko instead of Tavaj. We've obviously got Saliba in there, who, by the way, has just been a monster that mm. everyone's now saying is a stroke of genius, leaving him out on loan. <laughs> how about actually, how about actually, he was ready anyway and we just left him out there. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? Um, obviously, Party's back in the middle there now and uh, Jesus is up top and we haven't got um, Lacazette, who, to be fair, was a bit of a bum all last season, wasn't he? So I think when you look at it, I'm going for a 2 1. Arsenal win, narrow win. I don't think it's going to be like 4 5 nil. I'm hearing from some people, just because we beat Sevilla 6 nil. Um, It's mad. So I do think it will be a narrow win. I was really impressed with our pre-season, Lee, and I was really encouraged by it, just for the pure fact that we were scoring goals. That's something this manager's never been able to prove to me he can do. Like, how many one nils was there last season, or 2-1? Actually, we're seeing 4 nils and 5 one, five ones and 6 nils. So it means that what Jesus has done is... is allowed some movement up front, some finishing, but it's also brought in the other players. Martinelli, I think, has looked sick in pre-season and yeah. Saka as well. And I think that front three will do some damage. All I'll say about Vieira is expect a physical game because, like you say, he's bringing in some monsters. And apart from Conor Gallagher, who's no longer there, everyone else is exactly the same as last year. So I think they'll have a very good game against us, but I do expect us to nick it 2-1, mate. Mm, yeah, I, I think we're draw, if I'm honest. And so I see the starting eleven. Um, I'm going to say 2-2. And um, it's going to be hard work. Yeah, under the lights, Friday night, away at Palace. We've all been there. We're not fit to wear the shirt and all of them ones ringing around the stadium. <laughs> We've not had a great time at Palace, have we, really? But um, I, I think 2-2. No. And um, we'll, end up on, um, we'll end up on this comment here um, from this guy. Pep, Sterling, Jesus, Sane, Saka, Smith, Rojak all speak highly of Arteta, but what would they know compared to Lee and Dan? Um, well, we go off of results, mate. They're never, they're never going to sit and slag him off publicly, are they? Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these <laughs> comments are hilarious, mate. I don't get any of these comments, man. It's like, we, we what would we results, know? Mate. Oh, my God. Yeah, we it's go as if results, like, people expect us to be a, like, a football coach now. Like We give opinions on that. That's what podcasts are. But people mm. seem to think we're now coaches. I mean, it's a compliment to me and you, mate. Maybe they think that we are football coaches and stuff now, but it's just mad. Oh, I don't know. Bizarre, man. 
No, it's crazy. Listen, thanks for coming on. Make sure you um, subscribe to Dan's channel. It's in the title of the video, Blue Hyperlink. Just click it, takes you straight there, press subscribe. And uh, you're on with Lee Judges in what, an hour? Oh, yeah, God. yeah, over at Lee Judges TV, man. No, thanks, Lee. Top yeah. man, and appreciate you having me on, man. And great to see everyone in the chat coming back, and you're, you're smashing it again, mate. So keep doing what you're doing, bro. No, thanks, man. Big up, and uh, likewise to you as well. Big up to everyone in the chat. I'll be back again tomorrow. Um, I'm on Rance's Twitch channel. I'm not sure what time yet, but I'll keep you posted. And then full match day program, man. Watch along, fan cams, player ratings. Nine o'clock kickoff in Spain. You can turn it in. I'll still be up at 1 a.m. I've enjoyed my summer off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're out of here people um i'll take her out laters